So I'm Bradley Kuzmal. I'm at Toku Tech and MIT, and I like to measure things and get fast performance. And so if I'm trying to understand how to use SSDs so I can define data structures, then I see these funny graphs and I can't figure out what's going on. So I wanted to do that. Uh, and this, I'll get to this one in a second. So basically, this was the, the beginning of the Odyssey, is, is, is this benchmark that Percona ran running II Bench. Uh, the top curve is TokuDB, those two curves, and one of them is the SSD, and one of them is, is a rotating disk. And the bottom one is InnoDB. Again, one of them is SSD, and one of them is rotating disk. And the SSD is a little faster, up is good. But, you know, how come we're faster on rotating disk than InnoDB is on, on SSD, and why isn't InnoDB getting good performance? It's still a little bit of a puzzle. Um, I can't, what? I'm, I'm on, I'll talk into the mic. Okay, so, we, <laughs> so, I, so I got an Intel X25e and I uh, tried to look at the spec sheet to figure out what was going on. And according to that thing, it can, write 200, can read 250 megabytes per second with 35,000 uh, IOs per second with random four kilobyte writes, reads. And it can write 170 megabytes per second, getting all, uh, and, and about 3.3 kilo uh, writes per second. So my SQL was too complicated, so I said, well, the next experiment to simplify things is to measure Berkeley DB, and I saw this sort of performance, which is sort of the hockey curve, except that there were two, two steps on it. The first one where Berkeley DB fell out of cache, and the second where it fell out of main memory. So then I said, well, that's too complicated. Let's do file I.O. So I built a 12 gigabyte file on a machine that had three gigs of RAM, and performed random reads and writes, and then tried to make a performance model for that system. And the performance model is a fairly simple model where you try to uh, uh, assume that there is a startup cost for, for doing a read or a write, which is the seek time, and then there's some bandwidth that you get once you've started going. So the simple model for the time for a read is it's the startup cost plus however your block size is divided by the bandwidth, and similarly for the writes. Um, so I measured for varying block sizes, going from very small to, to something like uh, four megabytes. And the bandwidth I got sort of started out very low and got up to 120 megabytes per second on reads. And this was on a machine that was supposed to get 250 uh, megabytes per second. So I, I wasn't getting that. So I said, well, what, what, what would this curve look like if this model was what was predicted by the data sheet? That is the 16 microsecond startup time plus 250 megabytes per second. And this is what the curve ought to look like, but this is what the curve really did look like. So that's a little disappointing that I couldn't get the, on this thing to, to go faster. Uh, so I said, well, I kind of did a curve fit to try to find an actual model. The actual startup time looks more like 500 microseconds or half a millisecond and about 120 megabytes per second once you're going. Um, it's, it's nothing like 35,000 IOs per second. I was getting sort of 4,000 IOs per second. Write performance kind of had a similar story. I think it was a little less, a little, cris, a little less crazy. The, the write performance also had about a 500 microsecond startup time, and I got 80 megabytes per second. And the spec sheet said I should sort of expect 300 uh, microsecond startup time and 170 megabytes per second. Um, as I... As I vary the block size when I do writes, there's sort of an interesting thing that happens that, that, that you, you get, um, what is this? I get about 60% of what the spec sheet predicts when you are writing, I don't even remember what this curve is. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not as good, whatever it's supposed to be. <laughs> but, I'm fried. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I did manage to get more, more reads per second by doing multi-threading. So by getting a whole bunch of threads trying to read, read random blocks at the same time, I was able to get up from 4,000 reads per second up to 11,000. And that's still short of the 35,000 that the spec sheet predicted. But, you know, that's one way to get some performance. So what's going wrong? Well, maybe my drive's getting old because I've actually been using it, but it behaved about the same when it was younger. Uh, I tried writing to multiple files. Uh, Mark Callahan suggested that, 
that would help, and it didn't. Um, I haven't tried XFS, which might help, and I haven't tried sort of going around the file system, and maybe that would help. Uh, what the, when I'm designing data structures, the question that I'm trying to get at is how big should the block size be? If you use a really big block size for B trees, then you sort of end up making range queries fast, but point queries get slow. And if you use really small blocks, then point queries are fast, but range queries are slow. And so the challenge is to find a good, good halfway point. And the halfway point is when the seek time equals the transfer time for your block size. That sort of guarantees that you're always within a factor of two, no matter, uh, you know, no matter whether you're doing range queries or point queries or some other kind of a mix. So the half power point for this SSD, according to this data, suggests that your blocks, if you're doing reads, unthreaded, you need to do 60 kilobyte blocks. And if you're doing threaded reads, you get more, writes, more reads per second. So that's 30 kilobytes, and writes should be 40, kilo, 40 kilobytes. You compare that to a disk, the half power point is between half a megabyte and a megabyte. Um, so one approach that we use at Tokitech to, to is try to avoid this whole thing by having data structures that don't depend on what the actual block size is. Uh, there's data structures that turn out to be asymptotically optimal uh, without knowing the block size, and those are called cache oblivious data structures because they're oblivious to the cache parameters like the block size of your system. So we put that stuff into a storage engine. Uh, it gives these good performance so that we're actually faster, you know, faster on rotating disk than NODB is on... Uh, on SSD, and that's, you know, that's what we're selling.